Chapter 7 and 8 The Rise of Europe and the High and Late Middle Ages Part 6 Towns and Cities As you listen to the video, add to the outline below. All notes must be in your notebook. The essential question number one. Answer the question in your notebook. Where would medieval towns or cities establish themselves? And why did they choose a particular area? During the first centuries of the Middle Ages, towns were more numerous than important, poor and with a small population. The lack of roads and security hampered the development of the medieval towns, which in turn prevented the development of commerce. Medieval towns occupied, to some extent, the sites of previous Roman colonies. It might be a good idea to position your new town or village near an, an existing castle. Castles are built for defense and contain knights and soldiers trained in weapons. This would give you good protection against raiders and invaders. Merchants also trade goods with castles, and you might be able to trade with them as well. This will help to make your town richer and will attract more people to live there. In towns, space was at a premium. Houses were tiny and clustered close together. When a story was added to a house, the second story projected out over the first, and so on. The first floor generally housed the artisan shop, with living quarters on the upper floors. Fire was a constant threat in medieval cities and towns. Towns were dirty places to live in. There was no sewage system as we would know it today. Contents of chamber pots were emptied into streets. With mud streets, this presented a messy problem. This was a health problem. Polluted springs and wells were common. The most commonly consumed beverages were not water, but wine and beer. Smallpox was endemic. Leprosy was common. Rats were very common in towns and cities. Towns might use pigs to eat what rubbish there was. Life expectancy would be short. Life for a person in a town or city was described as nasty, brutal, and short. A charter gave people in a town certain rights that were clearly stated in the charter that town had. It was common for a town to ask for its own law court so that legal problems could be settled quickly. A borough charter was a document granting rights or privileges not to an individual or to a religious body, but to a community, namely a town. Medieval guilds played an important role in towns as guilds attempted to guarantee standards amongst crafts in medieval towns. A group of skilled craftsmen in the same trade might form themselves into a guild. A guild would make sure that anything made by a guild member was up to standard 
and was sold for a fair price. Membership of a guild was an honor, as it was a sign that you were a skilled worker who had some respect in society. A guild would look after you as a member of it if you were sick. It would help the families of dead guild members. Apprentices to a guild could be as young as 12 years old. They were taught a trade by a guild member. You'd expect to be paid for this by the parents of the boy. The apprentice could live with his master for anything up to 14 years. The guild member had made a promise to teach the boy well, and this could take time. Once an apprenticeship was over, the young person now was a journeyman. He would be paid a wage, and once he had saved enough money, he could start up a business of his own. Why were guilds important to the success of the town? Answer the question in your notebook. Draw a picture that shows an understanding of a concept from the video. The drawing must have color and be more than a few lines and circles. Be prepared to take a quiz on your notes the next class day.